Welcome back everyone. This video is about recursive functions in F-sharp. Uh, a very heavily used technique uh, not only in F-sharp uh, but also in, uh, in nearly all functional languages. You may have also encountered recurring functions in imperative world also. Uh, but there, there are slight differences between the way recursive functions are used in F-sharp or uh, in an imperative programming language. So I'm going to start with this example and then we will talk about uh, the stack overflow issues and tail recursion. So here is a very simple example of a function which uh, does uh, total of a given list and this is the recursive function for it. And you create a recursive function by keyword adding keyword rec in the, the lead binding and once a function is declared as recurring it can call itself that's what a recursive function is functions that call themselves now uh, first let's try and understand how this function is working so we have a list and we match this list with a head or head and tail case or an empty list case in case of the empty list we return zero in case of the head and tail we say head which is the current first element plus we recall sum for the remaining list so I, i'll draw uh, i'll write something here to to help you get uh, a better visual of what's going on um, so when the first time this function is called let us take this example so the list is this and head and tail becomes one okay and you say head plus so there is a sub function called which starts here okay and in this case you are calling the second function or the second invocation of sum uh, from the first invocation of sum with tail tail was this so the next time head becomes Two and tail becomes this once again this is called the head becomes three and the tail becomes this again a nested call head becomes four tail becomes five again a nested call head becomes five tail becomes an empty list and the next time for an empty list we return 0 so we start with this list so I'll just get rid of this this is what is happening 1 2 5 you keep getting the topmost value the first value in the list as head the remaining list as tail eventually the tail becomes an empty list and when that is passed you hit this case if you start this function, for example, if you run this, you will directly hit this case. Now, for each time what you are saying is head plus the result of the nested function call. So this plus the result for this, this plus the result for this, this plus the result for this, this plus the result for this and so and so forth. So this goes deeper, 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 and then it comes back upward. <clears throat> so what is happening is that um, if if uh, it's 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 a very fundamental computer science basic. Then a function when a function calls another function, the next function is loaded on top in the stack. So this is the lowest the the, the lowest in the stack, and this is the the highest in the stack. So this is this gets called and this, then this, then this, then this. The downside of this approach is that the more items in this list, the more stack space you need. Okay, so eventually you will run out of stack space. That's a big problem with recursion, uh, regardless of what programming language uh, you are using. This is a standard problem with recursion that if if you are recurring on on very uh, large lists or very uh, on a large number of items sooner or later you will hit the the upper limit the memory limits depending upon so many factors you will hit that limit 
um and that's uh, the answer to that problem is tail recursion so i'll i'll talk about tail recursion in in uh, in a little while but before we hit tail recursion i just wanted to show you few examples that here is uh, this so up to this everything will work fine we have a list of 1 2 3 4 5 then 1 200 1 2 1000 1 to 10000 let's just run it and see what happens What's wrong? Okay, let me just get rid of this file. So everything is working fine. Fifteen, fifty, fifty, five hundred, five hundred, five thousand, five thousand. And let me just uh, invoke this one also. And this will result in a crash. Okay. because you exhausted the stack space stack overflow repeated so many times and so on and so forth and it's not usual to have so so many items in a list but it's not extremely rare also you may encounter uh, situations moreover you don't want to write functions which are meant for large lists or long lists or small lists you want to write functions which are genuinely reusable well thought of well designed so that is where tail recursion comes now the answer to tail recursion before you discuss the answer you have to see the problem is when you are making the nested call from here you are saving the state head plus sum of head plus the answer of the next function call which means before this is you need to resolve this and then the answer will be added to head and that will be the answer for this particular case so whenever this case is triggered you say head plus solve this expression and add it to head and that's the answer so each time you are saving the state so the 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 answer for this particular problem to solve this tag issues is is tail recursion i'll copy the tail recursive version uh, of this function it's effectively the same function but it takes care of the stack flow stack overflow issues by utilizing tail recursion now i have highlighted here this technique typically involves three ideas an inner recursive function now this function the upper function the outer function is no more recursive we have an inner function which is now recursive it's here to here an accumulated value if you see i am invoking list so list now has two parameters the list l for list and the total so when i am invoking in a, for the first time from the outer function i am invoking it with zero because at that point in time the total value the total of uh, the list is zero we haven't started cal calculating anything updated per cycle so whenever you enter inside you say inner tail head plus total now the first thing you are doing is you are resolving head plus total head is a value total is the argument received by this function so this is now resolved and the output of this particular case the expression is inner tail the accumulated value plus head so the nested calls the the deeper function calls are not supposed to save any state as opposed to here the function call was supposed to be resolved first and then the result was added to head in this case we are saying we are saying head plus total and whatever the answer of that this expression is becomes the second parameter to ena now with this approach and the final result becomes this the outer function triggers yeah so basically three ideas you create an inner function you create an accumulator and you figure out a way to trigger the chain you have to have an initial value of the accumulator which is context sensitive which is depending upon what you are trying to do so i'll i'll show you more examples when f# -sharp compiler and this is what is tail recursion that the the nested function call is not required to the the, the function call is not required to save the state the state saving is here 
in this case no state saving is required and when that is not required compiler utilizes all sorts of optimizations to rewrite this functions as if this is a while loop i mean i can't really comment on how or what the the output uh, the compiler produced output is but if tail recursion is involved that is the caller does not need to save any state the compiler can optimize it now instead of calling sum let's call save sum and see what happens and in all the cases it worked well okay so this technique is known as tail recursion you create an accumulator and you pa and you keep on updating the accumulator per function call in within the inner function here is the similar ta uh, another example of a tail recursive function to find i believe the min the min out of uh, let me just open system so what i am doing here is recursive function for finding max okay sorry so max list i'll talk about this why have i used this if uh, in a little while let's focus here so i am starting this particular chain of recurring function calls with int 32.min why because each time i am my comparison is this and what i am saying is start the loop with assuming that the max so far is in 32.min then for each head and tail case we say loop tail and then we say if head is greater than accumulator i could have called it max to make it more readable so you are saying list and what is the current max for each iteration you are calling loop again with tail and if head the current value is greater than max then head becomes the max otherwise max remains the max so you are starting with min value the min the min of the most uh, the lowest value possible for 32 bit integers is in 32 dot min value similarly the maximum value possible for 32 bit integers is in dot max which is uh, yeah this is the main function min i mean same concept just that i have reversed the whole thing instead of i am because i need to find min i am initiating it with max and let me call it min yeah because this is the maximum possible value each time i am comparing what is lower the head is lower or the min is lower if the head is lower the head wins if the min is lower the min wins and i force it with the maximum possible value so that in the very first iteration whatever the value is should win assuming that it's lesser than this otherwise this will keep on winning so these are two three different example this one more example i have given of non numeric values which is uh, here is an example to convert a char list to string so let's see what is happening so let me just take it on top and this this yeah. so here is a function which takes a list of chars and converts it into a string now in this case again i have an inner function the list and the accumulator we are using is a string builder it's a standard dot net string builder so we start with an empty string builder whenever we find this pattern we recall it and before calling the inner function we add the head the current character to the string builder now string builder dot append results string builder itself Uh, it's not showing the current correct signature <coughs> string builder dot append returns the string builder itself so when you say sb dot append you get the string sorry the character appended and that new instance or the new version of string builder you receive it back so this is another example uh, different examples of how to trigger a tail recursive chain with the right accumulator one thing you need to figure out and the other is 
हाउ डू यू कीप ऑन एक्यूमुलेटिंग एक्यूमुलेशन में नॉट ऑलवेज रिजल्ट इन टू प्लस लाइक दिस और अपेंडिंग लाइक दिस इट मे इवन मीन अ सिंपल थिंग एज कंपेरिजन एंड कीपिंग द फ्रेश करेंट आंसर सो दिस इज इट दिस वॉज द इंटेंट ऑफ दिस वीडियो वॉज टू इज टू गिव यू एन आइडिया ऑफ वॉट टेल रिकर्जन इज इन फ्यूचर यू विल सी लॉट ऑफ डेटा टाइप्स विच आर रिकर्सिव फॉर एग्जाम्पल अ ट्री इन एफ शॉप इट्स अ रिकर्सिव डेटा टाइप यू विल सी हाउ टू डिजाइन सच डेटा टाइप्स एंड अ लॉट ऑफ डेटा टाइप्स नॉट ओनली रिकर्सिव द यूटिलिटी फंक्शन दंक्शनल अप्रोच इज टू राइट रिकर्सिव फंक्शन सो वी विल सी मोर ऑन दैट लेटर सो दैट्स ऑल फॉर नाउ सी यू इन द नेक्स्ट वन